Lamal Ultimate has gained uh, some significant traction as of late, especially considering that it's just, what, a year and a couple months old. We've seen the inclusion of co-op and online championships, but it is still listed as an early access title with lots of DLC. Benching this simulator has been anything but smooth. I encountered issues with both GeForce and Radeon, also Windows 11, and the latest graphics cards, they've been quirky. And I've spent a lot of time troubleshooting issues. The benchmark scenario I will be using is LMP2 in a full 40 car grid, at Coda, racing against the AI. We got hypercars in front, GT3s in the back. I'm at the back of my pack. Today's testing includes all of my graphics cards. However, I do have the two new kids on the block, which is the 9070 XT from Asus. This is the Prime Edition up against MSI 5070 Ti. This is a launch edition premium model. Because these are non-reference models, we get non-reference pricing. This is what I actually paid. This means the 5070 Ti is a whopping 38% more expensive than the 9070 XT. So one of the questions I have is, is it 38% faster? The quick answer is, yeah. I mean, here are all the numbers comparing these two cards. On average, the 5070 Ti is 37.9% faster, which I think is just a coincidence really, but there are some issues with its uh, minimums. It's 1% and 0.1% lows. To better understand this, we need to go resolution by resolution and bring in the other cards for comparison. All of today's testing will be with the 9800 X3D uh, AMD Ryzen processor on an MSI Mag Tomahawk motherboard. This is the X870 chipset. I'll have the remainder of the system specs down in the description. This chart quickly shows the graphics cards I'm testing today. It looks like eBay pricing has already dropped 50 to to $100 since last month for the 5070, the 4080 Super, and the 9070 XT. But I do not recommend buying new cards at scalp pricing through private sale. Before the results, I want to give a shout out to those that are supporting me. Uh, my most recent uh, super thanks from Jason Racing and new Patreon subscribers, Pop Monkey, Patrick, Alex, and Petri. You guys are helping me uh, along this journey. Also, shout out to Kyle, Nuno, and Jeff, my most recent clients. If you need some hardware consultation, just reach out benchmarkodysseys at gmail.com. When I first benchmarked LMU, I used basically high settings. And you can see that video back here. I also showed like the impact of different tracks, um, impact of night and weather conditions, things like that. This time around, I'm gonna use, uh, I guess, eSports graphics as uh, shared by James Baldwin. And I think these settings look good. I mean, I enabled multi-view for triple screens and I had to change the resolution and things like that. But for the most part, everything else is the same. Although I did change visible vehicles from 10 to 40 so I can see the full grid in the benchmark. Each AI race is different. There's about a 5% performance variance and I did two to three runs depending on their consistency. At the top, I have a sample of a benchmark run and beneath is the bar chart showing single 4K results. I did not test lower than single screen 4K because that's going to be CPU bound even with a 9800X 3D, especially with eSports graphics. The 5070 Ti leads the chart with 248 FPS, which is a 3% advantage over the 4080 Super. But I think it's important to note that there is definitely at least a 5% performance variance when dealing with live AI runs. So I think there's a tie here amongst the top three cards, including the 7900 XTX. The newest Radeon, the 9070 XT, is actually down in fifth place beneath the 3080 Ti. This performance is disappointing, especially if we think about other titles that are frequently reviewed by benchmarkers like Cyberpunk and Black Myth Wukong, Alan Wake 2, all those things. But when it comes to a niche title like Lamar Ultimate, a simulation, it's, it's got a long ways to go. And then at the bottom of the chart, I have three kind of older mid-range to entry-level GPUs for you guys to understand the impact of upgrading. But GeForce has a problem, and it is the minimums, the 1% and the 0.1% average lows. I tried a few different things to, to minimize those, but the micro stutters were persistent. I couldn't really perceive these stutters on the screen. That's why I call them micro stutters. I mean, the FPS were going over 200 
frames per second. My monitors only refresh to 120 hertz at 4K, so it's not like I can see this anyway. Later in this video, I go into a deeper dive showing some of the high level things I attempted to try to solve this at single 4K and with the triples. If we use the 9070 XT as our reference point at 100%, how do the other graphics cards stack up? Well, this is what that looks like. The MSI Vanguard SOC 5070 Ti that I have is about 38% more expensive. And in this example, it is 37% faster. So you get what you pay for. But the two high-end Radeon cards have much more stable frame time pacing. I, just look at these minimums. While the cards at the bottom have pretty good performance, keep in mind when headlights come on during a night race or if it's raining, expect a drop in performance 10, 15, 20%. There are a ton of graphics cards in between 3080 Ti and the 3060 Ti. And with my first LMU benchmark video, I attempted to fill that out. I evolved the tool to look something like this, but guys, this is just wrong. I had to make so many assumptions to try and anticipate the values, and I don't want to create misleading data, even if this is just back of the napkin type stuff. Back to real results. I also decided to test dual 4K to represent a widescreen monitor, but I have to take two of my 4K monitors and combine them using Ifinity and NVIDIA Surround in order for it to behave normally. LMU really likes to go full screen, and my previous 4K results were at full screen, so I thought, okay, let me just keep it the same. I only tested the 5070 Ti and the 9070 XT, and we see a clear, monstrous victory for the GeForce card. It was 50% faster and I had no issues with the minimum FPS. I did not use multi-view for this testing. This is just being handled as a single point of view. This resolution is actually higher than triple 1440p and this data suggests the 9070 XT is struggling. Now let's look at triple screen performance and we're gonna start first with 1080p. In order to get the most out of the GeForce cards, I had to use Nvidia Surround and I'll talk about that later, but for now, we're seeing the 4080 Super lead the chart at 205 FPS. It's essentially tied with the 5070 Ti and about 9% faster than the 7900 XTX. The 1% lows are all similar between these top three cards. And in this example, I wouldn't read too much into the 0.1% lows. Again, the AI are hitting each other and sometimes they're wiping out and that's always gonna cause a little bit of a frame dip. When we focus in on the ASUS Prime 9070 XT and I'm going to bring back in the relative performance comparison again. This new Radeon card is within what, 10, 20% of the fastest cards I have in this chart and is almost double the performance of the previous generation or the previous previous generation cards. I haven't talked much about GPU busy yet, which is shown here on the left-hand side. That represents the percentage of time during which each frame is being created that the GPU is doing meaningful work. I've noticed with LMU, this is a bit misleading. It's good as an indicator to go look at something and investigate further, but taken by itself, it's just not enough. Increasing the resolution to triple 1440p is next. I did a lot of troubleshooting at this resolution across all of these graphics cards. The 5070 Ti and the 4080 Super both lead the chart over 165 FPS, but I once again recorded an issue with the lows. Strangely, the 3080 Ti actually did pretty good here. Its lows are much higher. The 9070 XT is still the slowest of the top five, and the 5070 Ti is 38% faster. While the 6700 XT and 3060 Ti were playable, the 2070 Super was not. I recorded erratic performance from this card, and this was the best result. If you're wondering what the performance drop is like going from 1080, triple 1080p to triple 1440p, I did the calculation here for each card. Considering we've increased the resolution by almost 80% by going from triple 1080p to triple 1440p, I'm surprised the performance impact being measured across these cards is not more significant. Moving up to triple 4K, I did not bother with the three slow cards. It would have been an unplayable experience, but we get pretty good results for the top five. 
The 5070 Ti was actually able to break away from the pack with a 10% advantage over the 4080 Super and the 7900 XTX. Once again, the 9070 XT, it's trailing behind. It's at the bottom of the chart, 69.8, and it has lows in the, fi uh, in the 50s and 49 even. Um, so this is not a great showing for this card at a high resolution. The MSI 5070 Ti is 47% faster. That's a big gap. So if we go back to the first chart that I showed where we have both cards compared at each resolution, now you know what's going on. It seems like the 9070 XT is under delivering on its performance, which means there's an opportunity for the LMU team, for the Radeon team to optimize for this title and unlock some of that performance, which we know is there. A couple weeks ago, Hardware Unbox also evaluated a set of Corsa Competizione and they found discouraging performance from the 97 XT. Not long after that, we have the optional 25.3.2 drivers, in which case they called this out. So there is an opportunity for us, if we're loud enough, to get a response from AMD. So I encourage you guys to share my results and let's see if we can get some action on this. Speaking of drivers, I think it's time to begin the deep dive looking at some of the more intricate data I have, starting with adrenaline. I tried three different drivers that work with the 9070 XT and I did not measure a difference. This performance was captured at triple 1440p. If you're wondering what the hell are adrenaline drivers 2430-3102, great question. These are system integrator drivers that my Windows 11 automatically installed without asking. <laughs> Crazy, right? I already had the optional drivers installed, but I was getting desperate for a solution. So I thought, all right, I'll just roll with the latest monthly Windows update and these drivers installed. Anyways, they didn't help. So with my Windows 11 installation, I also tried enabling and disabling HAGs, the hardware accelerated GPU scheduling uh, thing that Windows does. Performance always seemed better with the 9070 XT when I had it enabled. And then I tried triple 4K, but with iFinity enabled through the Radeon software, I actually saw a big performance negative impact by leaving HAGs disabled. Your mileage may vary. All I can do is share my results. Speaking of iFinity, the 9070 XT didn't seem to be bothered if it was running full screen in that situation or running borderless windowed across a triple 4K uh, normal situation. All right, let's switch it up and talk GeForce. Uh, it was a struggle with this 5070 Ti and those pesky frame time spikes micro stutters, those 0.1% and 1% minimums. I really wasn't able to find a solution, but I was able to make things worse. First up is Windows 11 game mode. When this is enabled, it tanks my performance. But with Radeon, I couldn't even measure a difference. So this is unique, I think, to either Nvidia or this graphics card or my configuration. I can also visually showcase this with the frame time chart out of cap frame X showing disabled at the top, enabled at the bottom, spikes are bad. If we contrast this experience to what the 9070 XT displays, this is much better frame time pacing. The 9070 XT has smaller spikes and they're less frequent. Therefore, it's 0.1% and 1% average lows are gonna be closer to the overall FPS average. I also noticed that enabling NVIDIA surround, so having all three monitors behave like one Windows desktop, performance was always better in LMU. This wasn't just with the 5070 Ti, I noticed this with all of the GeForce cards, which is why all of my previous results that I had showed for triple screens, I did that with surround enabled. Also, with GeForce, I always ran hags enabled because it was better. And in this example, at triple 1440p with the 5070 Ti, we can even see there's a difference in the GPU busy. So clearly there's something going wrong when HAGS is disabled. I was able to confirm these results at normal triple screen and not surround, but I did try disabling HAGS with surround enabled. And here's how that went. That's right, a full system lockup with a power cycle. I mean, doesn't get much better than that, does it? 
Yep. Another test I did with the 5070 Ti was reducing the resolution to single 1080p and doing a race. The footage above is not that race, it's actually from last year, it's just something to have up there. Anyways, when we look at the frame time chart to the left, I have GPU busy in here, we see a couple things. One, there are still some big frame time spikes. While the average is around 2.5 milliseconds, we definitely see spikes over 8, 10. Also surprising is the GPU busy itself is at 0%. I always report the inverse of this, so this is saying it's actually 100% busy. This scenario is graphics cards limited. When we look at the sensor data on the right-hand side, that doesn't really add up. GPU load was averaged at 62%. We never were at the GPU lo load limit. Our clock is good. That's basically the max boost clock on a default profile, but our power consumption is only 167 watts from the 5070 Ti. It can easily go over 300. If the 5070 Ti is a bottleneck in this single screen 1080p example, it's not obvious why. Speaking of frame time charts, let's go back to one of the first benchmarks I talked about, single 4K 5070 Ti versus the 9070 XT, and here is that data. The frame time spikes from GeForce are pretty evident, especially alongside the much smoother and more consistent 9070 XT. I have no other software running during this test. There's no other sensors being monitored. It's just FPS. It's totally possible that different drivers from NVIDIA could solve some of these issues, or maybe there's a mistake that I've made in my test bench configuration that is making this problem worse. I'm totally open to your ideas. Please post them in the comments below. I did this benchmark run again with the sensors on and I collected this data. And with our GPU busy at 100%, we're seeing the 5070 Ti not go to its power limit. In fact, it's not even at the GPU limit. Whatever the frame time pacing issue is, it's also affecting these sensors. I'm also looking forward to getting more accurate power consumption figures from Thermal Grizzly. I've got a couple units in the mail and I'll be able to do a proper comparison between these two cards and what's actually being drawn. All right, if I was to try and draw some conclusions here, both GPUs have their own issues. The 9070 XT looks like it really needs driver optimizations from Radeon. Meanwhile, the 5070 Ti, maybe there's another driver issue from GeForce or a, a setting uh, issue and configuration issue on my end. I tried a lot of troubleshooting, guys. I couldn't figure it out. Over the coming weeks, we're supposed to see a 5060 Ti and a 9060 XT I don't know what price, I don't know the performance, but hopefully that um, extra inventory is going to bring back price competition and we're going to see more reasonable uh, store pricing and online retailer pricing. So thanks for watching and uh, good luck in your next race.